In Dead by Daylight, knowing the maps and how to play them is probably the single most important thing when trying to improve and play the game at a high level. In this video, I want to be showing you guys some of the most common tiles that spawn and also how to properly play them to their full extent. I can't quite fit every tile into the game into one video, so if you guys end up enjoying this and finding it useful, please make sure to let me know so I can try to make this into a series. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about before I get started is that I'll be showing how to play these map tiles as Survivor and touching a slight bit on the counterplay as Killer. The counterplay will be assuming that survivors are knowledgeable and will be looping the tiles. And it's important to keep in mind that a lot of survivors, even in high ranks, don't play tiles correctly and you can sort of just run them down without needing to predict them. We won't be discussing this at all, as I don't think anyone needs any help with it. I'll also be providing terrible drawings of each tile like this one, where blue represents windows and red dotted lines represents pallets. Okay, just to clarify what a tile actually is, a tile is a section of the map where different structures or rock and tree formations can spawn. Tiles that spawn walled structures are a 100% guaranteed spawn that will always be in the same locations on a map. While the rock and tree structures have a chance to spawn a pallet tile or sometimes a blank tile with nothing for a survivor to use. In this video, we're going to be talking about the walled structures since they're a lot more consistent. I also want to let it be known that this entire video will talk about playing with killers that don't have any special abilities to hard counter pallet play, such as Nurse, Huntress, or Spirit. The first tile we'll talk about is T-Walls. This tile is basically one L-shaped wall with a window attached next to a T-shaped wall also with a window attached. This is probably the weakest tile when completely isolated, but it can be pretty strong when close to other strong windows or pallet loops. When played properly, these can be a significant time sink, but they also don't contain any pallets so there's no reliable way to break bloodlust, meaning you'll eventually get hit if played perfectly so you should look for an opening to safely move to the next tile. If the chase is done clockwise, this tile is basically an infinite until entity blockers or high levels of bloodlust come into play. You save a lot of distance around the T section of the wall where the killer is forced to go around. The killer can control what direction the chase occurs though, so make sure that as killer you don't chase the wrong way. If you ever find yourself going clockwise, cut through the middle of the tile and force the chase the other direction. This forces the survivor to play one of the two walls and opens up the possibility of mind games. If you think the survivor will vault, meet him at the other side of the window to get yourself a free hit. Keep in mind, you're not entirely helpless as a survivor either though. You can try and fake the window vault and bait the killer into running to the other side and then continue looping. This tile, when properly played by both sides, comes down to correctly predicting what the other person will do and then counterplaying it accordingly. That being said, this is probably one of, if not the most single balanced tiles in the whole game. There are variations of T-Walls on most maps, but keep in mind that Colwyn is the only map that has tiles with see-through walls, meaning every other map has the possibility of additional mind games because of how much harder it is to keep line of sight of the killer. The other map's variations can be slightly different as well. For instance, Autohaven T-Walls have very slightly shorter walls that makes it a little bit easier to mind game as killer. The Swamp version of T-Walls is also different. The L wall has a decently longer wall that makes it slightly safer, and you could actually play just this wall semi-safely as a survivor if you're good when knowing when to vault and when to fake. Make sure to keep in mind with this vault and every single vault that I show you in this video to make sure that you take the angles wide to make sure that you get a fast vault. If you get a medium vault on any of these windows, you will get hit guaranteed. The next tile we'll talk about are single pallet tiles. A single pallet tile is a long C-shaped wall attached to a pallet and on the other side is a small L-shaped wall. There are some other structures that spawn with it, but there's really nothing to help you in a chase. Just some locker and totem spawns. This tile is basically just one really strong pallet and after the pallet is used and broken, the tile becomes 100% useless. The most important thing to consider when playing this tile is the size difference between the two sides. The larger wall is extremely safe while the short side wall is pretty dangerous. If you try to play the tile with the short side only, the killer will most likely be able to mind game you and eventually get to hit. The distance around this wall is not big enough for you to safely vault back and forth. On the contrary, the other side of the pallet is very large and it's extremely safe to play it. The killer shouldn't be able to get a hit while on the side of the pallet unless the survivor makes a huge mistake. As a survivor, you could force the tile to be played on the bigger side by looping around it if the killer tries to go to the short side. This forces the killer into having to try to play the safer side of the tile. This makes it one of the safest thrown pallets and as a killer player, this pallet should be kicked ASAP if the survivor you're chasing knows how to play it. Now keep in mind we've only been talking about playing after the pallet has been thrown. This tile is interesting because it's actually way more dangerous before the pallet's thrown and becomes super safe afterwards. On maps that aren't cold wind farm, you could use the lack of line of sight to your advantage as killer in mind game for some free hits, assuming you could actually land your hits. 
The auto haven variation of this tile was actually very different from the rest. The long C wall was turned into another L wall, and this tile was significantly less safe. The killer has a lot of opportunities for mind games before and after the pallet's thrown. This tile is close in strength to T walls because you could definitely make it last by fake vaulting and correct prediction, but once the pallet's kicked, the tile becomes completely useless. As killer, I'd try to not kick this pallet right away as a lot of survivors make mistakes and you can get some very easy hits out of it. And as a survivor, I would highly suggest trying to make your way away from this tile and try to get to a much safer one as quickly as possible. The rest of the tiles in this video will have a window and a pallet. It's important to understand the strategy behind these before I get into explaining how to play them. Almost all these tiles have risky windows attached to a pretty safe pallet. You could just run straight to the pallet and throw it, but after the pallet's gone, you lose the ability to break bloodlust, and the whole tile ends up a window that, even if played perfectly, will just end up with the killer getting tons of speed with bloodlust and you'll end up getting hit anyway. The most efficient way to use these tiles is to use the window as long as you can, and then use the pallet afterwards to break the built-up bloodlust so that you can move to the next tile safely, and then rinse and repeat. It's more risky than using the pallet straight up, because the windows have much more counterplay for the killer, but it will also keep more pallets on the map and buy your team more time, so it's generally worth it to do. Okay, let's move on to jungle gyms. This is where it gets interesting. There are actually two different ways a jungle gym can spawn. There are two windows and pallet spawns that are possible, but only one pallet and one window will spawn, and the other places where they could have spawned will be holes in the wall. The window and pallets will always be on opposite sides of the tile, and this first one I'll show you is called the long wall jungle gym. This is when the window spawns on the long side wall instead of the L wall on the other side. This is probably the safer spawn of the two, although they're both incredibly strong tiles. You can loot these tiles by jumping through the window, going through the opposite direction of the killer, and then looping around the pallet and into the window again. This works pretty well up until the killer starts getting bloodlust, and then you may have to switch it up and just use the window vaults, otherwise he'll catch up pretty quick. Keep in mind that this is the prime place for counterplay as killer. If you can predict the window vault, you can preemptively go to the other side and make a lot of distance to get yourself a hit. As survivor, at any time you can break the killer's bloodlust or just play safe by throwing the pallet down. This pallet is very safe when thrown and can't be played as killer even when bloodlust 3. Just make sure to loot the strong side of the pallet, the same way we talked about with the single pallet tile before, and the killer will be forced to play it on the bad side and won't be able to get a hit. Obviously, as the killer, the same rules apply, and the pallet should be broken if the survivors seem to know what they're doing. Again, Auto Haven has a slightly different variation of this tile as the other maps. The long wall that has the window loses a section of the wall that makes the loot bigger, making the window slightly less safe. You can still loot this tile with the pallet and window combination well, but if you try to use just the window to juke it, it can be very risky, and a correct prediction from the killer can get you caught. If you can manage to play the window side alone, you can buy a little more time for yourself than using just the pallet, but definitely understand it's the much riskier play. The other variation to this tile is the short wall jungle gym. In this instance, the long wall window is now a hole and a window spawns on the other side. The pallet spawn also flips and it's now near the end of the long wall. This tile plays almost identical to the long wall jungle gym, but the window is slightly less safe to play alone. You can still use the pallet plus window combination to loot for a long time, and the thrown pallet is still safe to bloodlust, and it should be played the exact same from killer and survivor. The Macmillan Estate maps and the Swamp maps both have a decently larger wall attached to the window for these tiles, and on these maps it's actually a pretty safe window vault that you could use without even bothering with the pallet. Just make sure you have enough distance on the window to guarantee a fast vault, and you can play this window up until Entity Blocker if you don't misplay, or as long as the killer doesn't do something incredibly fancy. As killer, make sure to use the lack of sight to your advantage and experiment with different mind games to try to get hits on these tiles. Playing both survivor and killer can help give you a good understanding of these tiles, and the better you understand how they're played, the better the mind games you can come up with to counterplay them. Four Walls is another tile that has different variations in the way it can spawn. I don't really have any good names for these, so I'll call them Bad Palette and Good Palette Four Walls. This is an example of a Bad Palette Four Wall. Just like the jungle gyms, a window and a pallet can spawn on opposite sides of the tile no matter what. The pallet and window that don't spawn become giant holes in the walls. These tiles come somewhere in the middle when it comes to strength, and it's interesting because they can only spawn on two maps, Auto Haven and Asylum. The windows of these tiles are a lot like the others. The walls are big enough that you can play a killer on them completely isolated, but you'll get punished if the killer predicts you correctly. The pallet in this particular variation is super dangerous. The walls around it are very small, and if you try to play this pallet before or even after it's thrown, you're definitely going to get hit. This is a pretty unsafe tile, and killers shouldn't have much of an issue as long as you can predict the window vaults correctly. The better version of four walls spawns the pallet on the other side of the tile, and the window also flips. 
The same rules applies for the window. It's another decently strong window where you can stall the killer a little if played correctly, but one wrong prediction can get you hit, so it's very hit or miss to use. The palette of this tile is decently strong though. You can loop it a little before it dropped, and even after dropped, you can still play it as long as you keep the killer on the long wall side. As killer, you gotta try your best to force the chase onto the short wall side, and you should be able to get hits relatively easily just through mind games. If the survivor seems to be knowledgeable and doesn't fall for your mind games, it's probably best to just kick the pallet and move on though. For our last topic, we'll talk about the strongest tile that commonly spawns, the Killer Shack. The Killer Shack has a very strong window attached to it, as well as one of the safest pallets in the entire game. A lot of inexperienced players believe this window is an infinite, with no counterplay aside from forcing vaults until the entity blocker comes in. This is a very common misconception, and there's actually a lot of play that can be done from both sides on this tile. If the survivor gets too reckless when looping, you can show your red light and moonwalk towards the other side of the window to bait them into vaulting, and getting a huge head start towards meeting them at the other side. This can catch a lot of survivors off guard if they aren't paying enough attention. As survivor, you need to make sure to pay attention and watch out for these plays, and it's good to not rush the window vault until you're sure the killer is committing to the inside of Shack. Make sure you leave enough space in between you and the window for a fast vault or you'll end up getting a medium vault and getting hit. If you're a killer player and you're playing at a high level, or if you believe the survivor you're chasing is very skilled, you can anticipate them looking out for the counterplay. You could actually fake like you're going to do the regular moonwalk and then moonwalk back into the shack to catch them off guard as they'll assume you've gone to the other side of the window. This is something that is only necessary at very high levels and if you haven't noticed it comes down a lot to predicting what the other player will think is coming. Keep in mind the same general rules apply even when chased the other direction. You can still loot the same way, although it's slightly harder to anticipate potential counterplay. Like we've already said before, make sure that you're taking the angles wide when going near the window to ensure that you get a fast vault, as a medium vault won't give you enough time to not get hit. The shack pallet is often referred to as God Pallet because it's one of the strongest pallets in the game. When this pallet's thrown, you can stay near it with no chance for a killer to hit you unless they break it. This makes it a very good place to be if the killer's trying to catch you with bloodlust as you can force a pallet kick that will reset it. With the pallet being so strong and also attached to a tile with a very strong window as well, it has a lot of value to the survivor team and should try to not be used unless you absolutely have to. Alright guys, that's all I got for this video. Being able to run these tiles efficiently takes a lot of practice, so don't get too upset with yourself if you mess it up for a while while you're learning. If you guys found this video helpful, I can make more about the rest of the tiles, so definitely let me know how you feel about it in the comments below. Feel free to also like the video and sub to the channel for more similar content. And thank you everybody for stopping in and watching. I will see you guys later. I'll see ya. I'll see ya.